Good morning. All right. Good seeing you this morning on this cool day, right? <laughs> All right. We want to welcome any who's first time visitor here. We're glad that you uh, uh, can be here this morning. You'll notice on our bulletin is an extra flap that is our visitor's card, and we appreciate it if you'd fill that out, put an offering plate later on when it comes around. A uh, couple things before we uh, get into announcement. First of all, uh, let me ask you how many have enjoyed the roses out front? Wow, isn't that beautiful? Well, Yvette planted those a number of years ago. So I told Debbie, I said, why don't, why don't, you, why don't you call Yvette and tell her that, she, you know, send a picture to her. So what your roses look like. And, and uh, by the way, uh, what was, has it been two or three years ago? They gave Yvette just a few months and she's still alive. And this is what she sent back. She said, hi, Debbie. <clears throat> Thank you so much for sending these beautiful pictures. I planted them several years ago. The deer have not found them yet. <laughs> I miss coming to church. I'm able to walk for a short time with a walker. The Lord is healing me slowly in his time. Too slow for me. 2020 has been a very difficult year for me and not because of the virus. I'm enjoying the spring, although I cannot be in the garden. Planting in pots is all I can do now. Hope to come to church soon. Thank you again for these pictures uh, that warm my heart. Amen. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Yeah. One year today. Amen. And this is a note from Dick and Betty Kay, which is amazing because she's had heart conditions for a long time, and then of course Dick K had his issues, but they're, they're still around. It says uh, uh, our missionary, uh, he was down in Jamaica, May 8th, 2021, it says, Dear ones at Camp Springs Community uh, Church, uh, your love and prayers and financial help mean so much to us and more than I can say. We are so thankful to the Lord for putting us in your hearts. Hopefully your weather has not been as crazy as ours. We have, uh, have a small uh, grape arbor, a cherry tree, and several apple trees. Thanks to too late frost, we will have no fruit this summer at all. Uh, with bad weather about over and COVID waning, I'm hoping to be able to reconnect with some of our unsaved neighbors. Pray with us for their salvation, love, and prayers, Dick and Betty Kay, missionaries we've supported many, many years. A uh, few announcements. Uh, we're still, of course, that's when the website's up, right? We're still live streaming, and uh, we're still on YouTube, and uh, doing these things. Lay's prayer group is still doing virtual, you know, on uh, second and fourth Tuesdays. Our Memorial Day picnic will be held a week from tomorrow from 10 to 4. Come a little bit early if you want to help set up. There's a sign-up sheet in the back, you know, things you can bring and enjoy. We probably won't have as many people as we normally do, but we can have a whole lot of, lot of fun uh, being there. Uh, board meeting will be Friday, June the uh, 3rd at 6 p.m. Uh, it should be June the 4th, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be June the 3rd. That's my anniversary, so that would be a... <laughs> yeah, that would be a... That, would be a, that might be a problem. Uh, anyway, uh, dinner will be provided. Uh, men's uh, prayer breakfast is the next uh, day and uh, at 8 a.m., Sign up in the foyer. That should be June the 5th instead of the 4th. It's on my paper here. This will be the last uh, breakfast. Uh, well, actually, it's not the last breakfast you eat till the fall. But, I mean, this is the last <laughs> men's breakfast we'll have <laughs> until October, which would be the, of course, the missions uh, conference. Uh, we are having a back-to-school bash on Saturday, August the 7th. This will take the place of Vacation Bible School. We will have an organizational meeting on June 
13th after the morning service. We already have uh, 50 backpacks. If you want to bring more, that's fine, but we also need a school supply donations, right? To whatever be typical of school supplies. Uh, Rod and Angie Ox's newsletter is on the back table. We can't read it because now we're digital and online. And let me give you some updates on, from our missionaries. Uh, World Missions Update. First of all, Pat Lackey says, due to the lifting of COVID-19 restrictions this summer, Pat is planning to run five-day clubs this summer at full capacity outside with no mask. Uh, they will be able to re uh, return to doing stories and singing and Bible teaching activities. The daily training will be at uh, Berwyn Baptist Church in College Park. Uh, on uh, the 21st of June through the 2nd of July from 9 to 4. So far they have one team sign up, Jonathan Bent, the son of Pastor Kiefer Bent, Pastor of Berwyn Baptist Church, and Martha Bent, their homeschool director at the church. Martha believes that there could be some more quality teens in um, their homeschool group to recruit. But, you know, if we had teens interested and able to do it, that would be great. They need Christian teens, 15 and up, to teach all or part of CEF clubs uh, that go from uh, the 12th of July through the 13th of August. Past goals to have 10 clubs running this summer. The clubs also need drivers and hostesses, so they're trying to get back to what they normally would do. Uh, Kevin and Lucy Heater, where are they? In France. Uh, in the Ozon Valley. A man who was un, an unsaved friend of a woman in their church agreed to have Kevin and another man read through the Gospel of John with him. The man interacted with him and asked him questions about Jesus in the Gospel. At the end of the reading, the man commented that he could feel the compassion of Christ throughout the book of John. Uh, the church young adults uh, led a worship service centered on the life of Abraham. This became a stimulus to a deeper study and reflection. Their amateur video, which was very amateur, was enjoyed by all. <laughs> uh, even though the church had no visitors for their Easter outreach and Passover, the man who read the Gospel of John with uh, them and two other invitees joined him virtually for a Zoom discussion on life after COVID. Uh, Kevin is using these various contexts to establish relationships to draw these men to Christ. Kevin and Lucy attended the virtual Crossword Conference on revitalizing the church. Courses were taught on equipping minds, dealing with problems in the church, confronting the issues of pornography, discernment, apathy, etc. Slowly, activities are beginning to open back up. For example, the Garden Club has opened back up in Corbus, giving the heaters an opportunity to share their faith with club members. Kevin has also continued his ministry in the retirement home. He was surprised how many empty rooms there are now in the home. Uh, the government is finalizing a bill, now this is important, uh, called the Separatist Law. It's aimed basically at radical religious groups like radical Islam, but it will impact all worship in all churches, especially non-Catholic ones. The details are still uncertain, so pray about that. Uh, due to continuing uncertainties, home assignment in the United States for the heaters this summer has been put on hold. So that's the heaters. <clears throat> One more, Daniel and Miriam Liebrick. Their number three daughter, Rebecca, and her husband have been asked to organize a children's camp for early August. Since this is the first time they have done something like this, they're asking for prayer. <laughs> uh, a lot of details involved in that. There are, they have been, uh, there's been some improvement in the technical online service presentation of the services as the church technicians have traced down a couple of problems. There are still technical issues that need to be solved. We know about that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, the children and youth have suffered the most from the lockdown. By June 9th, the churches will allow up to 100 people in attendance. This will be an improvement. But only when full capacity is allowed will, uh, will the programs for the young be fully implemented. 
Je uh, Jehoiakim, who had suffered severely from COVID, is fully back with the worship team. Timothy's ordination was delayed a year, scheduled for the 27th of June. They wished that all the church could attend, but of course the maximum now is 100 people. Um, given the Librix ministry, uh, given to the Librix ministry has dropped over the last two months. So it's asking for prayer about that. The Zoom seminar on leadership given by Daniel on May 8th to the Brussels Bible Institute went well. So Daniel was looking forward to doing the seminar in person. He's been planning this for two years. Jehoiakim's daughter, Leah, is still recovering very slowly from COVID. She had to drop out of Bible college and can no longer sing with the worship team. Her breathing is labored and her stamina is very low. Okay. And finally, Daniel presented a seminar on sexual abuse, trauma, and recovery to their church association this last Monday. So that's an update on our missions. Got your Bible reading, Mike? Ephesians 4, we'll be reading uh, verses 17 through 24. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your for former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for the time we could come together here this morning. I uh, pray you be the ones who uh, may not be able to be here this morning, maybe uh, watching uh, on WebEx or later on on YouTube, who guide direct to those, those individuals and anyone who might be traveling as well. I pray you be at the work ministries here, the missionaries mentioned this morning, uh, Dick and Betty Kay, the Librix, uh, watch over, bless the ministries there uh, as they uh, continue to serve you in these various places. Again, Father, I pray you guide direct, bless the uh, time here this morning as your word is preached this morning I pray in Jesus name amen amen good morning please join me in some worship is and take your hymnals take turn to number 155 get out your singing voices wonderful grace of Jesus 155. If you can, there's two parts for the chorus, so men and women, you can separate at that point. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. For even me. Broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise his name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching to all the lost. By it I have been pardoned, 
save to the uttermost. Chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgressions, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise his name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching the most defiled. By its transforming power, making him God's dear child. Purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity. And the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Greater than the return of my distressions, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise his name. Amen. Please turn to number 450, please. 451, I shall say. 451. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy rib inside which flow be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Oh, my zeal, no respite now. Could my tears forever flow? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring Simply to the cross I cling Naked come to thee for dress Helpless look to thee for rest Foul I to the fountain fly Wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Continuing Colossians. Chapter 3, 
Colossians chapter 3. And we have this, as I mentioned last time, Paul, instead of elaborating on some of these things, just gives this list, right, as one list after another. And uh, if this sounds familiar, it should because it's a similar list that we have in Galatians 5, right? The list of evil deeds and the fruit of the Spirit. A very similar list. But it doesn't elaborate. It's never been to the Colossians. So you just tell them, this is what you need and this is what you need to do. So last time we looked at the evil 11. Today we're going to look at the terrific 10. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tremendous 10? Titanic 10? Well, anyway, we're going to look at the, uh, uh, the terrific 10. And so, a very, very strong parallel to what Paul gives us in Galatians 5. It says, therefore, verse, starting with 3, verse 12, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you must also do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful." Obviously, this is one of those passages which deals with a lot of definitions of words and things, but it's very powerful and it's very meaningful. Verse 11 has stated that there's no male nor female to be free or enslaved, uh, but we're all in Christ's new creations. It doesn't matter what your background is. It's, it's a very, very different type of approach than God dealing with the Jews in the Old Testament it says this is open to everybody. Not that salvation wasn't open to other people, but it wasn't uh, in the New Testament. It's not centered around one particular people. Uh, and, and by the way, the word Scythians here, the Scythians were a nomadic tribe in the steppes in southern Russia. They were nomads, and they went over places and they raided people. So if, if you were, if you want to be called, you know, if somebody wanted to call you some kind of uh, barbaric, unprincipled guy, they called you a Scythian. <laughs> you Scythian, uh, you know, equivalent to what the Russians are called Cossacks today, you know, that type of thing. Barbarians is an interesting word. It's an uh, and I always murder this word, but an onotopia, right? Uh, it means that it sounds like it is. To the Greeks, anyone that didn't speak Greek sounded like they were saying bar, 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 bar. So they called everybody a what? Barbarian. That's where it comes from. We have that. We have all kinds of onotopia words. You have crack sounds like crack. You know, boom sounds like boom. Yeah, that type of thing. And, and so this is one of those words. You're either a Greek or a barbarian. Uh, matter of fact, the Macedonians murdered the Greek language, they said, so they were just half barbarians. <laughs> and so, but even barbarians could come, come in, and you know, the barbarians were considered low life type people. Now, the elect of God are those chosen, are selected by God from before the foundation of the world to be saved. You were chosen before the world even began. Isn't that something? That's just a, that just blows your mind, right? Ephesians chapter 1, 4, from the foundation, from before the foundation of the world, you were chosen. And so he says, it calls you holy and beloved. Holy means separate. In this case, separate from the world and separated to God. You're separated from the world and unto God. And beloved, God chose to bestow His love upon us, even though we were sinners. While uh, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? And there's no earthly reason why He would love us. <laughs> he chose to do that. It wasn't the fact that you were so lovable. <laughs> it's the fact that God has chosen to bestow His love upon you, that is sent His only begotten Son, that you might have eternal life. Now it says, I want you, he starts out the list, I want you to put on tender mercies. 
This is what sometimes in the old, uh, to the old guys were called Christian deportment. How should we act, right? How should we think? How should we respond? This is Christian deportment. Matter of fact, long time ago, um, young people, long time ago, you had on the report cards, do they still have report cards? <laughs> report cards, they did not only had, uh, you know, English and history and math, they had a place for what? Deportment. Yeah, that's right. And the tops was always an F, but you know, it just, <laughs> you know, how did you behave, right? <laughs> F minus, that's right. God can save anyone. Uh, <laughs> and so, deportment, and so this is Christian deportment. How should we act? The flesh still resists the regenerated spirit. It isn't automatic. When you come to know Christ, all of a sudden you become angel like. <laughs> it, you still had this flesh, and Paul talks about it in Romans 7. He has this battle, right? The law of flesh, the law of sin is fighting in him. And so he said, this is how we have. Now, God empowers you, but you must choose. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a Greek study. Did you know uh, that there are 29 different Greek words translated put? Twenty-nine different ones. Make up your mind, right? Uh, you know, put or place, and, and twenty-nine. Probably, probably the most variance of words, you know, for a verb in, in the New Testament. Put on this, put on that. Well, this word "put" is a word in duo. Uh, that didn't raise anything. It's in the middle voice. Silence. Okay. Uh, if you remember, <laughs> uh, right? Middle voice. Okay. Uh, Okay, no. Okay, anyway, if you remember your English, you might not. The English grammar, middle voice is something you do to yourself. So I put on my clothes. Who puts on the clothes? Well, I do. You know, you know, I prepare myself or I put myself through study so I might be able to get a job. Who has to do it? Well, I do. That's what the, this is a middle voice. I'm doing it to myself. In other words, it's not automatic. In other words, these Christian characteristics don't automatically come onto you. You have to choose, right? You're empowered to do, but you have to choose to do them. I mean, some of you have, well, no one in here, but some of you might have a, an angry personality or a short temper or an obsessive personality uh, or, you know, a, um, a peevish personality. And I know you've never been called peevish or uh, a uh, overbearing personality. But he said, these Christian graces must be put on. You must do it to yourself. You must use it. Now, this same word is used in duos, used over in Ephesians chapter 4, what Mikey just read, right? You put off the old man and you do what? You put on the new man. you got to do that. It's also used in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the whole armor of God. Well, who has to put it on? Well, you do the helmet of salvation, all these things, because you have been given a choice. You've been given the power to do it, but you've been given the choice whether to do it or not. So that's what this word is. So you're to put on tender mercies. And so he lists his tender mercies. Now, the word tender mercies here is literally bowels of mercy. Bow, that's what it literally is, or bowels of compassion. You see, in the Near East, the sea of the motion is not the heart, but, but the gut, the, the bowels. So if they had Valentine's Day, instead of sitting that little heart, they'd sit that little stomachs. You know? I, I know that, that image, President, we, we think of that more for Thanksgiving. But anyway, it's a. Uh, <laughs> but even our hearts really don't look like real hearts, right? If you really drew a real heart, I mean, you're. Yeah, right. Anyway, uh, but anyway, back then, so, so this is, the, the stomach was the seat, the gut was the seat of, of your emotions, of your mercies, of your compassion. And so, but it comes a little bit over into our, our culture, and, and I had a gut feeling, right? I have a gut feeling. Or I had this feeling in the pit of my stomach, you know, and so, there, so we have some of that, but we don't send out stomachs at Valentine's Day. 
So, tender mercies, to put on bowels of compassion. Now, I want you to notice this. This is not something that you do, it's something that you are, right? That you have to learn, learn to be a compassionate person, right? It, it's not something that's automatic. You have to learn that, you have to be compassionate, okay? And then it says, put on kindness. Uh, this means goodness of heart, or with wholesome intentions. So, 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 you have to choose to be kind. Now, if you are a um, self-indulgent person, or if you're a person that stays to yourself, that might, you might have to go around, out of your way to choose to be kind, you know, uh, especially on the road, right? Uh, and uh, th th this is an issue. Then it says to be humble, to, be, to, to practice humility. Now, the, the word before Jesus came, the word humility was a negative word. It meant to be lowly. And no one wanted to be lowly, right? You were a low life. You, were, you, you, you wanted to be on top. And Jesus said, it's not going to be the way with you, right? If you want to be the greatest, you need to be what? Servant of all. You make yourself lowly. So the, the word, it says, literally means to reduce yourself and put others in front of you. We have that over in Philippians 2, 3, right? Thinking on the things of others, what? More highly than yourself, right? And so it's, this, so it's to reduce yourself in your own, to reduce your worth in your own eyes that you might lift up others to be more important to yourself. So this is humbling yourself. You know, and we use this in many ways. For example, if someone's poor, you say he's a person of humble means, right? Lowly means. This is what John the Baptist taught. He told his disciples that Jesus must what? Increase and I must decrease. And that, that's this whole idea of humility, right? I thought John the Baptist today, so I saw the cicadas flying around. He ate locusts and found out you can actually get some uh, cicada tacos downtown at a restaurant and cicada scampi, but for a limited time only. <laughs> so, uh, but, but they put enough sauce that you won't know that. The, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, okay, uh, humility. Then, then, then it says, put on meekness. The word meekness means gentleness, having a gentle nature. Meekness is not weakness, right? Jesus was we meek, but he was not weak. So, meekness is having this gentle spirit. And this is put on long suffering. Now, long suffering is made of two Greek words uh, macro, meaning big or long, and thumos to heat up or display anger. Uh, macro comes over into our language and things like macrocosm, the universe, or a macron. You know what a macron is? Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> a macron is that, that diacritical mark over top of a word that said this is a long vowel, right? So you see, the teacher back there said, yeah, I know what a macron is. You know, it means to make this vowel's long. So if a long E, if you pronounce an E, you know, rather than a short E or a long A. And so that comes over to our language. Thumos comes to our language as thermal, you know, temperature. And so what this means is taking a long time to get angry, right? Long suffering means that you're taking a long time before you get angry. You're not popping off. You're not showing rage, right? It's, and so you're taking a long time. Matter of fact, the Hebrew word's interesting. It literally means long nosed. And uh, they believe that long nosed animals like sheep and stuff were meek, and short nosed animals like pigs were snorters and, 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 and angry. And so if you were to laugh long suffering, you were long nosed. Um, I won't elaborate on that. Uh, and so, and we have this over in James 1.19, right, where it says to be slow to speak and slow to what? Anger, you know, and swift to hear, right? And so, it'd be it'd take a long time before you get angry. And so, that's long suffering to bear up with. It's, it's obviously related to patience and forbearance. Then bearing one another, or we could say forbearance, Literally, the phrase is this, putting up with one another. <laughs> you know, it's in the marriage vows, right? You know, better worth putting up with one another. <laughs> well, okay, that's not in the marriage vows, but it's implied there, right? And, and, and to be honest, you know, we have to 
put up with one another, characteristics, and sometimes we rub each other the wrong way. And uh, as, uh, as Justice Barrett says, some people have sharp elbows. And he says, you know, bearing one another, putting up with one another, you know. And uh, whenever you have people together, you're going to have some kind of a conflict. And so for bearing one another, you know, putting up with one another. Then, and then finally it says forgiving. The word is charisomanoi. Okay, that doesn't ring a bell, right? Actually, we get our word charity from this. This is where we get the word charity in the English language from this word. It's charity. That we're charitable to one another. We're gracious to one another. You know, uh, Ephesians 4.32 says that we have to be tenderhearted to one another, forgiven to one another, even as what? God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. That's what it says here. You know, you forgive one another because what? Because God forgave you through Christ, right? He says, as Christ has has been been used to mediate you and and God forgives you because of that, you're to pass that on. So the, the forgiveness here means you're not going to hold someone to account. You're not going to hold a grudge for offenses. You're not aggrieved. You pass that on to the Lord. If you don't have any complaints, it's don't. <laughs> pass that on to the Lord. Vengeance of mine saith the Lord, I will repay. So Christ forgives us, we're to forgive others. And then he goes there, and I want you to notice that at every single uh, uh, epistle just about caps it off with love. Love seems to be the king, right? And so here it has it again. And above all things, beyond all this, love one another. Now why is that the king? Because you love one another. You're not going to be angry with someone else. You're not going to you know, try to take advantage. You're, you're, you're going to be meek towards them, humble towards them. Love just sort of covers everything. And so he says, I want you to love one another. That's why Jesus told the disciples, you're going to know you're my disciples if you what? Yeah, love one another, right? You're going to know your disciples. You have love for one another. This, this is king. That's why in 1 Corinthians 13 it says, you know, you have faith, hope, and charity, or faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest is love. It's the king of all. It, it, it's over top of everything. It's agape love, forgiving, charitable love. And, you know, that's when Jesus was asked over Mark chapter 12. He said, what's the greatest commandment? It says, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Again, if you love your neighbor, you're not going to murder your neighbor, right? You're not going to commit adultery. You're not going to steal from your neighbor. You're not going to covet. And so, beyond all this, he's given to Colossians this, this, this new commandment. Matter of fact, James 2 calls loving one another as a royal commandment. It is a commandment from the king. So, so for people, for believers to charitably love is a completion or maturity. My, I've always, I've always um, rankled at this translation. We, we, the King James, New King James, a lot of translations puts perfection in there. We think of perfection as flawlessness, right? Uh, if you're perfect, you've done everything exactly right. Well, God is flawless, but we're not. The word is teleos in the Greek, which means to be complete or mature. So, if I, if I have a television, I see the picture where? At the end of the screen. That, that's the end result. It comes to the screen. If I have a telescope, I see the image at the end of the uh, eyepiece. If I have a telephone, I hear it on the, by the way, people's cell phones, they used to be things called telephones, rather than cell phones. And uh, it comes to the end and you hear the voice at the end. See, there's a teleos to be complete or mature. Be mature as, as, as God is mature. And so do that. So we have this teleos. And then it says, if all this happens, the peace of God's going to rule in your heart. I want you to know something about this word peace here. It means it reigns in your heart no matter what's happening in your life. Even if your life's in turmoil, you'll have the peace of God reign in your heart, a peace that passes what? All understanding, right? Over Philippians chapter 4, it passes because if you have a love of God, 1 John chapter 4 says, perfect love casts out fear. It doesn't matter what has happened in your life. If you love of God reigns in your life, the peace of God reigns in your life, is a fact you are tranquil in the midst of, of the storm. It doesn't bother you because of the fact that God is in control and you understand that.
And then at the very end it says this, and by the way, this is a capstone uh, on, on several passages in Scripture. Be thankful. Uh, be thankful, be grateful. One of the problems we have in a, in a very prosperous society is we're not grateful for what we have, right? Uh, we complain that we don't have a big enough house or a nice enough car or everything else. Well, most of the world doesn't have that, right? I mean, uh, how much more do we need? We just had a message on that at 10 o'clock service. How much more did David need, right? That he has to go take with someone else's wife and has to uh, murder her husband. How, how much more did he, did he need? And so be thankful in everything. Uh, matter of fact, in everything gives thanks. First uh, Thessalonians 5, uh, God is the granter of all things and it, everything belongs to Him. And you need to constantly praise Him for what you have, not complain what you don't have. I mean, Job 1 is just absolutely amazing. The Lord takes everything away, so the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I mean, it doesn't belong to me. It was only on loan to me. Even though your life is on loan to you, it belongs to Him. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, it says, all spirits go back to God from which they came, right? It just, every, you know, it all belongs to Him. And so, one of the things that we have a problem is if Samson goes wrong, if we don't have, uh, and it reminded me uh, yesterday, we're selling this land that was given to us down in Virginia, and all I needed was a notary. It took hours to find a notary to notarize. You know, went to one place and he said, well, our notary is on vacation for two months. Said, that must be nice. <laughs> Called around, couldn't find. And the bank says, oh, yeah, we notarize, but not land deals. He says, oh, you notarize is a signature. You're not notarized. And so I called Melissa Coker, and she said, oh, I can do it. She says, that's great. Then she calls back and says, I can't do it. <laughs> she says, she said that uh, they won't let them do land deals. <laughs> I said, wow. But Melissa, I, I'm going to, she might be listening, I don't know. She actually called around and found me one. <laughs> so I went down to the UPS store down in Brandywine and they did it for me. And so, you know, free at last, free at last. You know, I just <laughs> <laughs> took, took, took hours to find this thing, you know. But I was getting frustrated. And the Lord says, what are you frustrated about? You know, I'm in control of all this. All right, all right, you know. Everything else, but we've got to learn to be thankful, right? Thankful for what we have, thankful for what the Lord's given to us. And, and so that's why it says over Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14 do all things without what? Complaining and grumbling and everything else. By the way, a complainer can't praise God. Can't. A grumbler can't complain to God. If, if, if you go to prayer and all you have is complain to God, God, I want this, I need this, and everything else, you can't praise God. Well, so the number one quality of praising God is being thankful for who God is, what He's done, what He's promised, right? If you have salvation, what do you have to complain about? Right? If you have eternal life, what do you got to complain about? Right? I mean, it, it, you, you have everything, right? Uh, you know, uh, you know, that's what the, the songwriter is talking about, a hymn writer, I'm a child of the king, right? So what do I care if I have a mansion here or everything else? I'm a child of the king, you know. There's a mansion waiting for me over there. And so the Christian graces are one package. You know what? And that's, that's why you have over in Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit, not fruits. They're one package. You say, I'm a gracious individual. I got five of the nine, right? <laughs> I got seven out of ten, and I'm no, no. It's all, you know. It goes both ways, right? If you offend in one part of the law, you what? Offend in it all. It's, it's a package. And let me tell you this: it's hard work. It's hard work. Not work. It, it is difficult because you have the pull of your flesh. You have the pull of the world. You have the pull of, of. Uh, you know, Satan, and, and, and you had to pull the godless. It, it, you just have it over and over and over again. And uh, it's hard work. 
If you're going to walk in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's a day by day, right moment by moment, every single time. And even when you're down, right? Even when you don't feel like it's a choice. And going back to that verb, put it on. You got to do it. You got to do it. He'll help you. He'll guide you. And you can't do it without three things. One, you can't do it without a commitment. Right? You got to have that commitment. Number two, you can't do it without the Word of God. You can't do it without the Word of God. The Word of God is what feeds you, what fuels that. And number three, you cannot do it without putting yourself in a position where you have people around you who can encourage you, or where, you, where you're, you're making sure you're avoiding those things that are tempt you, that you hold accountability. You can't do it without that. And so there has to be a loving spirit, a thankful spirit, then the Lord will shower you with peace. That's Christian grace. And when people see that in you, they'll see three things. Number one, they'll see, well, that's rare. Number two, they'll test you. And when you show Christian grace even been tested, they say, well, that's genuine. Then number three, they got to decide, do I want that? <laughs> What is it about you? you know, Amy Carmichael once had a woman come up to you who says, listen, you got a joy that I don't have. What do you got? <laughs> Boy, is that a door that's open. When they see Christian grace in you, you're going to stand out. And that's why it says that you're the light of the world, salt of the earth. Amen? Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being here, and Lord, for these Christian graces, Lord, and just draw us ever closer to you that we might glorify your holy name. We want, ex we want to promote that Christian grace. We want to be able to shine forth for you, Lord, and be able to humble ourselves and, and show that meekness and forbearance. And also, we want to be able to be a testimony for you, Lord, and, and show that love that Christ can shine through us and that peace that passes understanding. And Lord, we want to be thankful. We want to be so thankful for who you are and what you promise and what you've given us, Lord. Your name is just, just to be glorified and lifted up, Lord. And Lord, I pray if there's anyone here that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that this will be the day of salvation for that person. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.